Ready to go. Okay, welcome. Uh, thanks for joining us to our API K-12 Advisory Board. So what uh, we're going to do today is we have, you know, as you know, we're going to be discussing the new laws mandating AAPI studies in Connecticut. Uh, we are going over the four levels. Uh, so it's going to be broken down into four levels. And we're going to discuss what each level entail. And Jason, you're going to have the slideshow as we go along, correct? Mm -hmm. um, so you can all see it. Um, after we discuss each level, um, we will uh, take about three to five minutes, three to four minutes, maybe at the end, um, and just jot down any questions, concerns, or comments we may have. Um, so you can, you know, write those down. It'll show up next to your name. Um, and then at the end, um, we can go back and we'll have a Q&A um, session. Awesome. Thank you, Gurmeet. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, this is the first uh, of, of many uh, advisory board meetings where we are uh, going to share our progress uh, towards meeting the goals set out in the new legislation and also charting our path for the next six months and for the next year. Um, we've asked you guys to be a part of this because we really want your feedback and we really want to hear your thoughts um, about this work. Um, this process began as a community engaged uh, process and you know we wanna continue that as a part of how we build the curriculum and, and continue this work with schools, teachers, families, students, et cetera. So um, we have a, 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 a color scheme going on that you'll see in a sec. Um, in the chat, I dropped a link to a Google Doc. Um, this is a document that we would like to use to capture your thoughts, questions, concerns, as we move through each of the four levels of activity that we're engaged in, we'd like for you to use that document to enter your questions. At the end of our presentation, we'll ask for uh, to highlight the, the most pressing concerns or the things you're most excited about. Um, but we also want to keep a, that, that record of your, your feedback. Okay. Um, so, um, so any questions about that? There's They're color-coded by level and then also space for your name. Uh, so you can write the comments next to your name. Does that make sense to everyone? Anyone have a question about how we're gonna proceed? No? Okay, great. Because uh, you know, working with, um, with teachers and students, we really found the, the graphic organizer method uh, seem to work work well for this. So, um, so thanks for um, uh, for you know being a part of this, and we really look forward to your feedback. Um, and uh, so, I'm going to start sharing my screen now, and uh, this will be the presentation. Okay, share sound. All right, can everyone see that? Awesome. Okay, so we have uh, basically four different levels of work that uh, kind of categorize how we're approaching this. Uh, one is uh, research and community outreach. The second is uh, through the curriculum lab, which is you know focused on culturally sustaining pedagogy and the, the group of uh, community of practice um, and level three is another aspect of the curriculum lab that's more directed at specific district partnerships. Um, level four is about early college experience, the ECE program at UConn and professional development work. Uh, then we're gonna show uh, some of our plans for the next six months and our year long goals. And then we'll wrap up with, um, with Q and A at the end. Um, so to begin, uh, I want to kind of re revisit where we where we've uh, how we arrived at this place now. Um, so two laws have really shaped the inclusion of Asian American and Pacific Islander studies in Connecticut. First in 2021, PA 212, uh, which established the um, 
uh, a K through eight API model curriculum. Uh, and this went uh, into, um, this generated a lot of interest, uh, including the other fields uh, such as Native American studies, African American and Latino studies um, to revisit what the state's social studies standards were in order to really make that model curriculum more robust and fit more securely in the, um, in the, the standards of, of our school system, right? The second law was in 2022, that's PA 2280. And this law mandated the inclusion of a Asian American and Pacific Islander studies in K through 12. And here I've, I've excerpted uh, from the statute this, this language here, uh, which really has guided our work uh, so, such that we can meet the, the letter uh, of the law for, uh, for this education mandate. All right, so I'll just read it out loud. You know, such Asian American and Pacific Islander studies shall include, but not limited, but not be limited to a focus on one, the history of Asian American Pacific Islanders in the state, the region and the United States, and two, the contributions of A, Asian American Pacific Islanders towards advancing civil rights from the 19th century to the present, B, individual Asian American and Pacific Islanders in government, the arts, humanities, and sciences, and C, Asian American Pacific Islander communities to the economic, cultural, social, and political development of the United States. So this, these are, are really our guiding principles, our guiding kind of lighthouse, uh, what shapes uh, the direction that we're, we're moving in. And, um, and this corresponds with really a, a broader kind of interest in uh, public investments in civil society, uh, such as the, you know, trying to address hate crimes, making our communities safer, and making education more accurate and inclusive. Uh, and so these are, um, these are really demonstrating the power of, um, of community organizing. And really these laws belong to high school students in Connecticut. Their voices were raised, their voices helped to convince legislators that this was an important, uh, important change to be made in the state. So really, you know, for the, the folks who contributed to these campaigns, some of them are here tonight. Uh, thank you for writing the letters. Thank you for the work you, that you've done. All right. Um, I wanna shift now to uh, discussing um, the alignment of our work with the State Department of Education and professional standards. Um, so, I, I don't believe I introduced myself at the beginning. I'm so excited to share this. I think I skipped over that. So for those who I haven't met yet, I'm Jason Chang, uh, professor at UConn um, and, um, and director of the Asian and Asian American Studies Institute. So um, JHD, can I uh, call you up for, for this slide and uh, just briefly introduce yourself? Hi, I'm JHD or Jenny Hikula Diaz. I use they and she pronouns, and I, I have a few jobs. Um, I work with Jason at UConn as an activist in residence um, through the Asian and Asian American Studies Institute. Um, I also work with the Connecticut Council for the Social Studies as the professional learning coordinator there. And it's been really great to see how those, those two roles um, have some really great links um, and connections. Um, so that's why I think Jason asked me if I'd be willing to talk about this because um, the work that we're doing on the Asian American and Pacific Islander studies integration um, ahead of the mandate right now, when it's um, supposed to start in the 2025, um, the fall of 2025, um, is very much aligned with the work that's been done by the State Department of Ed, by um, the Connecticut Council for the Social Studies, and by, um, I think, 100 educators across the state on drafting K-12 social studies standards um, over the past year. Um, I, I say drafting, um, it's going through revisions and is hopefully soon going to be in front of the State Department of Ed. Um, and I wanted to just share with you a little bit about that in case you don't have um, information. Um, I wanted to pull up specifically the themes that 
um, were driving the development of the these this new version of standards um, because I think they're very aligned to to what we're doing and what we'll be talking about tonight. So as you can see in the slide, um, the themes are justice, representation, inclusivity, global context, agency, and local connections. And after hearing Jason read um, from the legislation, I, I think you can see the, the connections between those themes um, and legislation. And then I think you'll continue to hear uh, the connections as we go through the rest of the evening. You're muted, Jason. Thank you. Um, just complimenting you, JHD. This was uh, it's wonderful to have you on the team and thank you for summarizing the work that you've been doing wearing multiple hats. Um, let's see here. Uh, so we're gonna look at this level one work. Um, and in order to introduce this, I'd like to call on uh, Mike Keo uh, to kind of give us an overview and just kind of help us help to shape what this area of work entails. Uh, Mike, go ahead. If you could also introduce yourself too. Hi all, my name is Mike Keogh. I am um, the founder of the I'm a Virus Campaign, co-founded of uh, Make Us Visible alongside many in this group. I um, serve on the Governor's Hate Crimes Council and I recently began as the Community Engagement Manager at the Connecticut Historical Society. Um, doing this work, we understood that many people were new to Asian American history and may not have understood the concept within the state. Um, funding from Connecticut Humanities allowed us to broaden people's awareness of Asian American stories and experiences in their communities. Um, these programs allowed the di public different entryways into expanding what it meant to be Asian American through poetry, podcast, storytelling, and an author reading. These programs led attendees to reflect on their own experiences, like an African American mother sharing that she was so happy that the family of Far East Deep South found ancestral connections, but envious that her own stories could only be traced so far. A number of viewers shared that they didn't know Asian Americans were minorities. During the poetry workshop, a biracial Asian American reflected openly for the first time what it felt like to grow up and had to pick a side. The book readings and discussions allowed for connections and educators were able to walk away with um, funding from Voyager's books that shared the Vietnamese American experience within our within our state. You know, um, when our author Balfi read You Are Life, which was a new book that didn't come out yet, a mother who herself was an adoptee saw herself reflected and hugged her child a little bit hunger, uh, a little bit tighter during this experience. Um, what we were seeing, what we were seeing these transformative moments in everyday people's lives and our community's lives where they were beginning to think of the Asian American experience in their own towns. And I think that was one of the, the key things that we began to plant seeds for. Thank you, Mike. Um, so one of the challenges that we recognize with the formation of this, uh, uh, with it, you know, trying to uh, construct an Asian American studies and Pacific Islander studies curriculum for Connecticut is that there are, we don't have the research on our local communities. Uh, we can't go to the library and pull that book off the shelf. Uh, so this is the work that we've set out ahead of us uh, to you know, build community connections and conduct that research uh, at the same time. And Mike's you know, portrayal here really demonstrates how we really see these two you know, uh, elements working together, research and community outreach. Um, so this is uh, a couple of the flyers and a, and a, a, a picture from uh, Balfi's visit. Uh, these were um, uh, events made possible with funding from CT Humanities, which was a, an incredible kind of inoculation of uh, uh, the you know, resources and um, and 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 partnerships with uh, with the Connecticut Historical Society. And um, and other you know other groups around the state to really kick off this work. Um, Mike, did you want to say anything more on this slide? Our average engagement online had about three hundred and thirty people at some events. Some events went up to six hundred um, views. 
Um, live audience ranged anywhere between 30 to 70 people, depending on which event it was. And it was really wonderful to see so many different and diverse folks. Our poetry reading series, for example, were mostly attended by non-Asian Americans. You know, so that was, um, I thought it was something that was really interesting. Yeah. And I would just like to, to point out that our uh, Asian American Poets and Community Dialogue series was really, I think, the first to, to highlight uh, local Asian American poets. Uh, after, their, uh, after this series featuring them uh, at the Connecticut Historical Society, they began to have more requests for readings across the state. So having this elevated platform is really important to uh, developing that broader kind of public dialogue um, and, and creating more awareness around them. Um, and you know this, uh, this other flyer that you see, a critical introduction to teaching Pacific Islander studies, uh, really draw, drew in uh, a lot of interest with two very prominent uh, Pacific Islander studies scholars. Um, and, you know, and it was really a kickstarting, you know, our, our, um, our commitment to including Pacific Islander studies in, in this, in this work as a very deliberate kind of, uh, aspect of, you know, uh, looking at both pan ethnicities of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. Right. Next, I'd like to uh, call on Karen Lau to uh, to help us uh, uh, just to share a bit more about the um, the Teach It module that we created on Asian indenture, and and then I can speak about this uh, comic book that we've recently written will be published in the coming months. Sure. Hi everyone. Last fall, Dr. Chang's class created activities about the coolie trade, which was a trade of indentured Chinese and South Asian workers. And we aligned our research on this with the Civil War era. And Connecticut's connection to the coolie trade is through the Mystic Seaport Museum, which had a ship called the Hound that was constructed. And that was used to facilitate the trade of these indentured Chinese and South Asian workers. And by publishing this on the Teach It website, teachers are able to use this activity in their classrooms. So this is a great way to share it with teachers around Connecticut who are interested in teaching students how Connecticut history ties to the coolie trade. Yeah, thank you, Karen. Um, it, it, and uh, as a complement to this module, we've also written a, uh, a comic book about a coolie mutiny in the Pacific uh, several years after the, uh, the La Amistad uh, uh, mutiny and, um, and case uh, trial in Connecticut, in New Haven. And, uh, and so we have this illustrated story of uh, you know, what is the, the trade in indentured Asian workers? Uh, what did their pursuit of justice look like? And how is this connected to um, contemporary issues of human trafficking, of labor exploitation, and really provides uh, a, 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 a deep connection to the state of Connecticut, but also allows us to start the story of Asian Americans that includes uh, um, the histories of colonialism, um, anti-slavery, and uh, freedom and justice struggles. So these, you know, really do help to connect and really touch on those um, those important uh, key themes in the social studies standards. Uh, next, I'd like to ask Quan uh, to step in and uh, talk about the the internships. Thanks, Jason. Hi, everyone. My name is Quan Tran, and I am um, the intern director's internship director at Make Us Visible Connecticut, um, and also the Make Us Visible national team. And my day job is a senior lecturer at Yale University in the Ethnicity, Race, and Migration program. Um, and as you can see, the work that we do, uh, we involve high school and college students um, in the process, both in the back end, helping us with the research components of the many aspects of the work, um, but also trying to help us to better understand the landscape of the state of Connecticut in terms of Asian American student population and Pacific Islander student populations. 
Um, so since 2021, um, our high school and college students, some of whom are actually on this call, have helped us gather um, demographic and EDI data in the state of Connecticut, as well as the national census data for the for Connecticut, but also the different um, Make Us Visible chapters, so that we can better understand, uh, you know, what are the areas that we could have and what we could develop differentiated approaches in terms of curriculum development and um, implementation. So I just have to, a little slide here just to give you a sense of you know, what that landscape looks like in Connecticut um, in terms of the districts with the highest number of Asian American students and Pacific Islander students. Um, and these are the top five. The, the districts with 5% or more combined AAPI student population. Um, and it shows, right, that it, as we are thinking about and doing this work, uh, the, the different approaches, the differentiated approaches will be uh, crucial in terms of thinking about outreaching to communities, um, but also the various school districts and the different sites of um, and opportunities for engagement. And I'm happy to talk a little more about these data um, in the Q&A portion, if there's interest. I'll pass it back to you, Jason. Thank you, Kwan. Yeah, just a reminder, you know, uh, to use the uh, the Google Doc to, to enter in any questions or, um, or highlight things that you want to draw attention to. Um, now I want to turn to a project that has uh, kind of started before the pandemic uh, and then has taken on a new life now. Uh, so I created the Filipino Nurse Diaspora um, uh, uh, exhibit at the School of Nursing in, uh, in stores at UConn and uh, did this right before uh, we opened the exhibit, right before uh, the pandemic hit. Um, and since then, uh, we've wanted to use this exhibit to also talk about the experience of Filipino nurses during the pandemic. Uh, and so uh, students in my Asian American history class at UConn uh, constructed this, um, this uh, virtual you know, um, uh, uh, presentation that connects the exhibit to the, the experience of nurses. And I'll just play a little bit so you can get a sense of what this looks like and the texture of, of the content um, and you know that these are the these this kind of material can be very easily paired with um, with newspaper accounts uh, with other kinds of primary and secondary sources um, that can uh, connect their their um, you know, different uh, different forms of information into thinking about the consequences of the pandemic on our communities. <laughs> During the recent pandemic, healthcare workers were at the front lines combating COVID-19, this deadly illness which put their own lives at risk, but their contributions are often forgotten. Filipino healthcare workers were among one of the Asian American groups disproportionately impacted by COVID-19. Filipinos only make up 4% of all U.S. registered nurses. However, 26.4% of nurses who died due to the pandemic were Filipino showcasing the large disproportionate effect of COVID-19 on Filipino nurses. The U.S. historically has relied on Filipino nurses to fill the gaps in its own healthcare system, starting from the colonization of the Philippines in 1898, when the U.S. established American-style nursing schools in the Philippines. All right, I'm going to pause it there so you get a sense of of how the exhibit can connect to uh, contemporary experiences. The exhibit includes uh, other newspaper articles from Connecticut about the arrival of, of, of uh, Filipino nurses to, um, to our state. So, uh, so this is another example of the kind of connections that we are trying to, uh, to make and, and support. Oops. Uh, next is uh, a project called My Story, Our Future. And I'd like to invite Terry Park to give, just say a couple words about the, the work that, that we're doing down in Greenwich 
uh, with the South Asian American community there. Hi, yeah, sure thing. So uh, I was brought in uh, a few months ago to uh, co-design and co-facilitate uh, this storytelling project, uh, which is in partnership with uh, the in India Cultural Center, uh, as well as the Greenwich Historical Society, both in Greenwich. And it's an oral history-based uh, storytelling project in which uh, about 10 to 15 uh, South Asian American uh, youth, high school students, and some middle, middle school students are conducting oral history interviews uh, with their family members, and uh, they've been trained uh, in the practice of oral history, uh, as well as um, readings and uh, lectures on uh, South Asian American history. And so uh, they're still in the process of interviewing their family members, and uh, they're also connecting their own personal stories to uh, this exploration of their family histories. And uh, we're gonna have two celebrations, the first one coming up this Sunday. Uh, it's a virtual uh, celebration and then an in-person uh, celebration the following Sunday on December 18th. And then there's also gonna be a, um, a curatorial component in which uh, the Greenwich Historical Society is going to train uh, some of the students into uh, installing uh, an exhibit, a public exhibit featuring uh, not just the stories, but also uh, the incorporation of personal objects uh, that are related to the interviews. So it's a really exciting uh, multimedia, interactive, public facing uh, storytelling project. And uh, yeah, I've had a great time doing it with, uh, with Jason. Thank you, Terry, brilliant. Um, I am going to play a quick clip from uh, one of the oral histories uh, collected by one of the, the workshop participants. Uh, I just want to draw your attention to the graphic there in the bottom right hand corner, which kind of tries to illustrate how we designed the workshops to build background, to have the students plan their own oral history research, to conduct their own recordings, and present them to their community and their family. Uh, that these would, you know, include understanding of their own uh, genealogies and their own families' uh, histories, along with the understanding of the, you know, material culture, some of the objects in their families that give those stories meaning um, and and connect them to material culture. So here, I'll just play a very quick clip. My name is Kamaya Agarwal, and I'm here with my aunt, um, Chitra Akor. It is November 29th, 2022. So Chitra Perima, could you tell us um, more about your migration, uh, what year you came and where you came to? Sure. Um, I came to the United States in 1984. Um, this was after I got married. I got married in 1983 in India. Uh, my then husband was already here um, in the U.S. And so um, he came back, we got married, and then I had to wait for about 10 months for my uh, green card to process. And it seemed like forever. <laughs> and uh, anyway, but I got here in March uh, 84, 1984. So that's a, a quick example of you know, one of the stories collected uh, where we really, you know, help to develop leadership skills uh, and um, and allowed uh, the students to have, um, you know, have experience uh, being trained in oral history methodologies uh, to really build, um, build our, uh, a, a new, a new archive, an archive that didn't exist already. Um, so, the, the next uh, slide here points to a very recent uh, exhibit at the Connecticut Historical Society. Uh, Mike, can you walk us through this? Let's start from um, Harper's history from the 1800s, where 120 boys were sent from China to Connecticut um, in the course of two decades to learn, to learn English, math, science, German, Latin, and um, Greek. And they came here and started lives. They were shipped off at eight years old and they were expected to return in their twenties. And um, the story still resonates today. 
where these young boys through their letters are talking about displacements, about where they belong and who do they belong to. Um, there's also stories about anti-Asian violence, as well as intergenerational conflicts between parents and children, something that could really still resonate with the Asian American experience. Um, one of my favorite stories on this is about this young boy who just wants to play sports. And his dad is writing his friend and um, who the boy is staying with. And he's just upset because his kid's not doing homework and just playing, um, you know, boxing and running around outside. So it is this really amazing part of Asian American history locally in Connecticut that really fleshes out these young boys into human beings and not just caricatures. And it's um, currently up until July. Thank you, Mike. Uh, and we've recently found out a bit more about other uh, other mission schools in the state, uh, namely the Heathen School in Cromwell uh, that also included Pacific Islanders. Uh, Hawaiian students uh, were recruited to that school uh, project that JHD is, is uh, and I will be tackling in the, in the coming months. Um, and I believe that is the end of this section. Um, Gurmeet, so, um, hand it back to you. Well, if you all at this point um, want to jot down any concerns or questions uh, you may have regarding what you just heard. Just take about a couple of minutes. Oh, Jason, thank you for uh, putting that link in there. I didn't know that we had some material on that already. That is fantastic. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, it's, a, it's just a short uh, essay, but some good resources there. Mm. Uh, the narrative of Henry Upakaya. Um, mm -hmm. I don't, I didn't look at the bibliography, but the former or the emeritus state archaeologist um, wrote a book on uh, his repatriation. Uh, oh, wow. I, That's, that is wonderful. Um, yeah, I want to learn more about that. So we'll take another minute or so. I see a lot of people have things to share. That's good. I love the collaboration part where we get to hear from all sides. It's great. Mm -hmm. So we can start now moving to the level two, which is the curriculum lab. Okay, great. I'm going to turn this over to JHD. Well, Jason and I will be tag teaming this section to some degree, um, but I'll give a quick overview and then get into the teacher communities of practice. Um, 
But yeah, this is the section where we'll be talking about school-based um, work that we've been doing with teachers. And um, two of the strands have been work that, that I've been doing with Jason and with teachers. Um, the first one listed is what we did last year during the 2021-2022 school year um, with a mentor text. Um, so we had a group of teachers who worked um, with the text the best we could do, um, which is a, a fabulous graphic memoir. And then um, this fall for this first semester, I've been working with a K-8 um, community of practice um, on not not around a certain text, but around a couple a couple things that we're we're trying to implement in all of their classrooms. And then Jason will spend some time talking about that middle section, the the curriculum lab, the Asian American studies across the curriculum section. Um, so if we can go to the next slide. Yeah, thank you, JHD. I just want to add one more thing here about the curriculum lab that we really needed a space to develop new pedagogical approaches to think about how to uh, how to both uh, teach content, but also uh, to to bring you know uh, bring the expertise that teachers have to new material. And so we thought the curriculum lab space, the kind of metaphor of experimentation and, and trial uh, really fit for what we we're trying to accomplish here. Um, so as I mentioned in the 2021-2022 school year, um, we had the privilege of working with a group of 10 high school teachers. Um, we used the text uh, the best we could do by the Bui. It's a graphic memoir that if you, you haven't read, you're, you're missing out, you got to read it. Um, and it was great because it was in conjunction with what um, college professors were doing also as part of the big read across uh, various universities in Connecticut. Um, so it was happening at the college level and the high school level. Folks were reading this book in a variety of courses. The high school teachers, um, as you can see on this, this video, we'll watch a clip of um, we're based in three cities in one town across six districts, 10 schools, um, very different, um, very different schools, very different demographics and very different courses. Some of them were, were working with the text um, in a unit in a course like an ECE course on health and education in the community, while others were, were using the text as part of a more traditional English class that they were teaching. Um, and the reason why it was great to be doing it across the, the high school and college also was because the college professors who were involved were able to provide some really great resources that teachers often have to go and make themselves, um, especially because the backdrop of the text is the Vietnam War. And so um, I don't know about you, you all and your um, learning of US history um, and that war, but I know there are I, didn't, I did not have the adequate information um, to be able to, to feel like I had what I needed to, to teach a book like this. Um, so the college professors who were involved um, created some really great resources. Um, they held an expert panel. The Bui also came, the author came and, and did a talk about the book as well. So it was the plethora of what teachers were provided ahead of time and ongoing in terms of um, the materials was tremendous. Um, and then we had a monthly community practice where the teachers got together with me and with Jason and we spent time talking through challenges they were facing, um, talking about experiences students were having and they were having with the text, and then also implementing a couple through lines, so a couple projects that all of them did. One of them was this, this sort of like inter-school dialogue. Um, so I paired up teachers so that they had an opportunity via Zoom to have their students interact with students at another school and discuss the text. Um, some of the students loved that more than talking to their peers that they knew really well in their, their classrooms um, because they, they found it to be a really a different experience um, than how they've engaged with texts before. And some of them were even more honest about some of the things that they were experiencing and thinking about with the books um, in those Zoom sessions. And then um, many of the, the teachers also engaged with their students in some, some art, um, some art in response to the text as well. So that was another through line for the book because again, it's a graphic memoir and the, the, the visuals are, are such an integral part of the experience of the book. 
Um, and then we had teachers also share the materials. They sometimes led or facilitated parts of the communities of practice. Um, and then we, we managed to gather up a lot of that in a, in a Google Drive. So now we can publicly share um, the things that folks worked on in order to in, in order to do these units. And they're iterating on them this year and we'll iterate on them again next year. And um, so giving them this opportunity to, to try and experiment as Jason was, was saying before um, and innovate has been, has been really great for them and for their students. Thanks, JHT. I'm going to uh, play a clip here of some of the, uh, that captures some of the work that we did and the, the, the story as, as JHD has, has described it. So here we go. We'll also get to hear uh, from a student. One of the themes that stood out to me the most and the best we can do by T. Bui was on the re refugee resettlement and race issue with Vietnamese citizens coming into America. In the novel, Bui's family struggled to find peace having to face multiple obstacles. Ma and Bo had a difficult time finding jobs because the degrees that were earned in Vietnam were not valid in the U.S. Okay, so that was just a, a, a sample of the, the work that we did, uh, you know, thinking it through a mentor text and uh, an extended kind of series of professional development opportunities through the community of practice, uh, really kind of, you know, seeing how, um, uh, how much growth happened in the course of this really has encouraged us to sustain this model of working with teachers and trying to scale up with this model in mind. Oops. Um, okay, I think, let me go here first, JHD, and then I'll come back to your slide. So um, after, after or I, I think it was actually maybe during the, um, the, the work with the um, community of practice on the best we could do, I also convened a series of panels bringing in um, you know, experts in Asian American studies that thought of and did work in different parts of the K through 12 curriculum. Uh, and so this really spoke to what we understand as Asian American studies is interdisciplinary. And uh, we really wanted to, um, to it, not just rely on a history-based uh, sort of form of inquiry, uh, but to really bring in the richness of Asian American studies into, um, into different kinds of classrooms across, uh, across the curriculum and within schools. Uh, so there's really a lot that, uh, a lot more, um, you know, uh, I guess different ways that the Asian American Studies curriculum could find a purchase within schools, right? So we, we brought in uh, Catherine Ye, uh, who is a, uh, an important voice in the, um, um, the, National Coalition of uh, Teachers of Mathematics, um, and Sarah Park Dalen, who is a librarian and children's uh, book scholar, uh, Soyu Ann, who is an education scholar focusing on teaching social studies. Uh, we have Terry Park here, who really helped to understand the intersections of art and performance and how those, um, those fields are you know, critical to practicing Asian American studies. And then also Andrea Neighbors, who is um, in the um, uh, um, is heading up uh, the Smithsonian um, Asian Pacific America Center's uh, education um, initiative. So really, you know, leaning on you know both you know local, state level, and national level organizations that can inform and support uh, the work in uh, in these different ways. So. Uh, so we're really excited to be able to, you know, kind of um, use the curriculum lab space to open up the conversation beyond uh, uh, sort of the forgotten chapters, if you will, of, you know, a historical approach to thinking also about, um, you know, how lessons can be learned through uh, mathematics, uh, can be learned through 
uh, participation in performance art and uh, and material culture. Um, so, and these were recorded sessions that we plan to keep offering and make, making available to teachers. Uh, JHD. So we we are um, doing another community practice this year. It looks a little bit different. Last year was a year long community practice with high school teachers, and this year it's a K eight community practice um, by semester. Um, so this year we have 13 school districts, 15 schools, and 19 teachers involved directly in the, the planning and, and the communities of practice. Um, and the, the two focus areas this year, it's not around um, building a unit around a particular text that everybody's reading in common. It's on how to, to select a set of texts um, with a critical lens. So really thinking about how to select a variety of texts that share diverse Asian American and Pacific Islander stories. Um, and then there's this oral history storytelling interview work that teachers are doing with their students. So students are learning how to um, ask questions and how to engage with local Asian American and Pacific Islander community members. Um, and so these opportunities um, offer students the opportunity for, for mirrors into stories that um, resonate with them. Um, and then also offer them windows into the lives of others, people who um, are different or unfamiliar to them, may not even be members of, of their, their own small community in which they live. Um, and so far it's been really, really wonderful working with the teachers. It's, it's such a huge variety of folks who are working in very different contexts. Um, Right, all together, we've worked with 25 schools, 19 school districts and 29 teachers so far. And, and the numbers keep growing. Like second semester, we'll have a, a new group of, of K-8 teachers who, who join in this work. And again, um, we're collecting the materials, the lesson plans, the connections, um, and what comes out of the collaborations that we do monthly um, through the community of practice so that we can publicly share all of those things. Um, and just to give you a little voiceover of the pictures, um, the one in the upper left-hand corner is the high school community practice from last year. Um, the one in the lower right-hand corner is part of the K-8 community of practice. And then um, this picture that looks like it's in the cafeteria, it's in a cafeteria. It's at um, East Haddam Elementary School. We have four teachers working as a team there. Um, it's actually the electives teachers um, plus a second grade classroom teacher. And so they've been able to do some really interesting innovation in how they're collaborating across the school and bringing Asian American and Pacific Islander studies into a bunch of different places, um, including this picture that, so one of their um, interviews that they did was with Mystic Local uh, children's author, Debbie Michiko Florence. Um, she came to the school and they decided, you know, we, we're not just gonna share this with the second graders that we're working with on this project this year, we're going to do it pre-K through third grade. So um, we had hundreds of kids who had the opportunity to interact with this really awesome local community member um, through the school visit. Okay, I believe we wrap up section two here. Um, if you all want to take about two to three minutes and just jot down some comments, questions, or concerns. Yeah, just a reminder, we're in the green section of the of the Google Doc.
Let's take about another minute. I do see a lot of nice comments. Okay, let's move on to level three, uh, curriculum lab and district partnership. Awesome, thank you, Gramit. Uh, so level three, really this is another aspect of the curriculum lab that focuses on the participation of UConn, uh, UConn uh, School of Ed students. Uh, so this is a group of, of students who have you know, been working, some have taken uh, my class, uh, Intro to Asian American History, and others uh, have been um, identified as the, you know, won the Vorsing uh, Scholarship, which I'll explain at the next level. Uh, but for now, what I wanted to point to is the work that we are doing in the curriculum lab to think about district partnerships. What are some, uh, you know, some models that can, um, can support the community of practice work that JHD has spearheaded um, and that can tap into the, um, the, the pre-existing you know, curriculum development uh, structures and professional development structures already uh, working within school districts. Um, so one example of that is, the, um, is in fall 2021, I, um, I supported the Farmington High School Social Studies uh, Professional Development with a retreat in Hartford, uh, hearing from UConn scholars um, and, and really developing um, a number of, of interesting lessons uh, for them to incorporate that would build on and contribute to uh, Asian American studies and a number of other fields, including Native American studies and um, and uh, that looked at geography, history, um, and a number of other, you know, elements. So uh, that was an interesting partnership to learn of how to um, to participate in the existing professional development mechanisms of districts. Now, there are 172 districts in Connecticut. Each has their own pattern of professional development and how they utilize that. So it in terms of how we approach that then as an organization, as a, as a campaign effort, uh, we needed to understand the landscape of these different you know, professional development systems and, uh, and how each one uh, tackles social studies and its other disciplines. So in the spring of 2022, uh, Katie Coleman, one of my students did a tremendous job of surveying the uh, how social studies was taught in each of the 172 districts. Uh, this gave us a really clear idea of where social studies has a really strong purchase uh, in schools and where it is struggling in others. Um, some some districts have in the middle grades, uh, a, you know, are um, I'm sorry, in the elementary grades are giving you know uh, uh, 20 minutes to social studies once a week. Uh, some you know uh, have much stronger, you know, uh, exposure. So those different kinds of patterns are really important for us to understand as we move forward, right? So in in this fall, uh, what we've done too is begin to do outreach and interviewing and questioning uh, other districts on what kinds of support would be most useful to them. Uh, and this is really informing how we think a scale-up strategy could be successful. Uh, and, um, and so th this is, you know, this is working in partnership with, uh, with schools that we've developed relationships with, 
um, as well as schools that we haven't contacted already. So there's, you know, this is uh, led by the students. They're uh, managing the communication strategy and, um, and that this is, uh, you know, a, a, um, these discussions are opportunities for us to think about the structure of education institutions in, the, in, in Connecticut and how we might most effectively work to impact them and be a part of their uh, helping them solve their own problems, right? That incorporates Asian American Pacific Islander studies and um, and does so in a way that, you know, that honors uh, our, our commitments. Um, and then lastly, the thing that we've been working on recently is, you know, in talking to different schools, we realize that they um, have different needs and different desires uh, to, you know, uh, for incorporating Asian American and Pacific Islander studies. So we know now that we need to use a curriculum survey tool, um, one that could potentially be used as a as a self audit, too. That would allow um, principals, curriculum leaders, department leaders, uh, teachers to uh, develop an awareness of the different ethnicities. Uh, of Asian Americans that they would like to teach or that they currently already teach and to understand where gaps are in their own, um, in their own curriculum, uh, but also perhaps in ways that can you know, address certain populations of uh, Asian Americans in the state. Um, then you know, that we would cross uh, those kinds of interests in terms of ethnic group uh, also with discipline, right? So if they say wanted to look at Sikh Americans in Connecticut um, and, uh, but then wanted to focus on music, right? That would be an interesting uh, way to kind of capture these, you know, these different um, um, ways of, of building exposure to the curriculum. Um, and, um, and then that, you know, perhaps a way if if there is a, already a strong music program that then we would, you know, maybe think of other ways of incorporating different Asian American ethnic groups into that music program uh, to augment and support um, and build connections uh, across conversations. So um, so these are, the, you know, we don't have a lot of visuals for this work because it is. Um, it's kind of done over Zoom as we're discussing the needs of different school districts and evaluating the communications that we're receiving from different schools, principals, department heads. Uh, so this is uh, an ongoing kind of workshop space where we are trying to find the, the best you know, approach uh, tailored to specific districts. Um, and, and so this is a really challenging but exciting uh, area to work on with the students as they bring a lot of energy and these uh, this exposure is also helping them to understand the um, the schools that they will eventually be teaching in. Awesome. Um, so we've just wrapped up level three. If you want to take about two minutes uh, to jot down any comments, questions, or concerns you may have. This is exciting, Jason. This is a lot of work. Getting a lot of input, this is great.
Yeah, I just uh, can't underscore enough the importance of the community of practice work, which you know we see as a really strong model for uh, for supporting schools and teachers. Uh, while some of the professional development strategies that districts use would align more with sort of what I would say maybe is like more of like a webinar style uh, professional development that is maybe a single workshop or maybe a, a dual series workshop, uh, maybe one on content, one on pedagogy. Um, but what we found in the community of practice is the continual engagement and the collaborative and collective approach to um, working through some of these questions was, you know, produced such strong results uh, that, you know, this is uh, something that we would like to be able to facilitate for, um, for, for districts um, as they begin to find a commitment to, to this work. Um, and, and so what I think we've done is to help demonstrate a kind of proof of concept of what this could look like and what kinds of resources would need to be put in place in order to support them. Um, this is, you know, a way that gives teachers ownership over their learning and, um, and we're going to see a lot um, more durable and, uh, and creative um, kinds of responses to the incorporation of API studies. Great. Um, let's move on to level four. Okay. Thanks, Kareem. Early college experience and professional development. Right. Thank you. Uh, so this is a separate category, really, you know, just a, a, a totally different area of work. Um, now, this is work being done at UConn. Uh, one, I want to underscore here the um, the activism of Kamala Borsain, who is a baker in Avon. Uh, has this uh, wonderful, wonderful bakery called Bunam. Um, you have to go and visit uh, and 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 try uh, this bakery. It is phenomenal. Um, but she was inspired by um, by the um, the need to address hate crimes and the discrimination that she faced, even as small business owner in Avon, and was you know, uh, excited to see our work uh, in communities and in schools and uh, committed to funding a scholarship for future teachers. And each year we'll be uh, highlighting two future educators um, to, uh, to be a part of this process. And, um, and that, you know, what, what, what we see this as, you know, contributing to, um, you know, a new model that doesn't just look at professional development as the only way to bring API studies, but to make sure that future teachers have it before they graduate uh, and that they incorporate this into the schools that they end up teaching in um, when they build their career. Um, having, you know, these individuals, you know, uh, at the beginning of their career will help to ensure that they become uh, leaders in their own schools uh, as they as they grow and develop. Uh, so here we just want to really lift up the you know these four uh, wonderful individuals and future leaders in API studies in in the state. Georgia Mike and Lina Bo, Katie Coleman and Angela Chen uh, have all inspired me to to continue this work and um, and they're going to. Um, really help with that heavy lifting uh, through me that you you identified. So um, they bring such commitment to this and uh, such a, a great opportunity to, to work with students outside of the classroom. Um, next, I want to identify this course that I built at. Uh, I, I led the, this a collaborative work with other you know UConn faculty. It's called Confronting Anti Asian Racism. It's a one credit seven week course that is free to all UConn students, faculty, and staff. Um, in its first offering uh, in the fall of 2021, uh, had 1,700 uh, participants in it. And, um, and this is a course that we would like to see 
made free and available to every person in the state. Um, anyone who would want to teach it uh, would, uh, in my mind, be very easy to create that access point um, to this, this online course. Um, now, this course um, is, you know, part of a pilot for that kind of exposure is to use this course as a, um, as a certification for teachers uh, so that they can begin a course of study, um, perhaps, you know, as a team of, of other teachers to engage, you know, the different modules on Asian American identity formation to histories of imperialism and displacement to thinking about intersections with the LGBTQIA community, um, that there are a number of ways that this, uh, this course could serve as a kind of welcome mat and a, you know, a way to begin a, a set of, of, um, of learning for, for teachers. And, and so this is, um, this is a really, you know, exciting, you know, kind of development here because we're, uh, we're experimenting on our peers at UConn uh, and seeing the kind of impact here. So this course is also helping to, you know, inform students about the presence of Asian American courses, Asian American studies courses at UConn. So we have 150 uh, percent increase in the number of minors um, at UConn uh, since conducting these public facing you know, projects and, um, and bringing this kind of access to the curriculum uh, to all students. Um, so uh, this dovetails with the efforts that we're doing to introduce the first um, early college experience course into high schools. Uh, it's called Introduction to Asian American Studies. And this will, I think, be the first college, uh, the first Asian American studies course for high school students to get college credit. Uh, and in order to, to do this, we have to certify the high school teachers. Uh, so we're going to use the uh, Confronting Anti-Asian Racism course, as well as a community of practice approach uh, to building individualized syllabi uh, that work for each of the teachers and, um, and that, you know, really uh, kind of connect to those core aspects of Asian American studies that, you know, art as an interdisciplinary research um, outcome and, um, and that also, you know, prepares them for, uh, for more, uh, you know, um, more elevated study once they do arrive at at UConn, um, having students already uh, prepared or already, you know, holding three credits of an Asian American studies course will make it that much easier for them to minor in Asian American studies when they do arrive at Connecticut. Uh, so we expect this to also develop um, the continued learning, not just the, the the material that they will encounter through their primary and secondary education, uh, but this course will also uh, help to establish a clear path for uh, degree completion once they arrive at UConn. Um, and so the four teachers that are engaged in the first cohort are in Avon, Simsbury, and Stores. And, uh, you know, as, you know, this is a, a, a UConn course, we're expecting to integrate these high school classrooms and the high school teachers as uh, Asian, Asian and Asian American Studies Institute faculty uh, to or help them organize academic and public facing programming and to really incorporate them in the university community. Um, so these are, um, this is, you know, uh, something that will continue for, for this. Um, uh, we just got started, had our first meeting uh, two weeks ago uh, with the teachers and are, you know, beginning to build our our, um, our work plan for the spring. Great, um, so that wraps up our section four. So if you wanna take a few minutes and jot down some ideas and thoughts, questions, concerns. And Jason, we're hitting 8.15 right now, so. Okay.
while people are working on uh, different aspects of their comments, I want to invite the um, the others uh, to identify one of the uh, one of the goals in the next six months to, to highlight for the advisory board. Um, I, I'd like to start just by you know highlighting the Yukon Reads program, uh, which we've selected Rika Aoki's Light from Uncommon Stars, uh, which is a fabulous book told through uh, the stories of three Asian American women, um, and uh, really is a wonderful fantasy sci-fi novel that connects the experiences of a um, of a trans Vietnamese American um, uh, violin uh, protege with a Japanese American um, violin teacher and a uh, Southeast Asian um, uh, refugee who, who is um, also from another galaxy. So the the book does you know really cover a lot of different things and is a great way to incorporate this uh, kind of fiction into uh, uh, conversations um, across you know different areas. Uh, can I call on you, JHD? Um, yes, I'd, I'd like to mention the next thing on the list, the Asian American and Pacific Islander Studies Ed Symposium. Um, this is being led by Make Us Visible. Um, we also have support coming from our partner, the Commission on Women, Children, Seniors, Equity and Opportunity. Um, and we actually have a planning meeting next week. Um, I'd really particularly love to invite uh, the young people and students who are on this call, if you'd be interested in, in helping out with planning, that would love to have you be involved in that because it, it, it can't be just um, educators and, and adults who are, who are leading those kinds of spaces. Mike, can I call on you? Yep. So, you know, some of the work here needs parents parent involvement, right? Um, so we're doing a Far East Deep South panel in West Hartford. that will be a district-wide event for our parents in K-5. Um, this film, if you haven't seen it yet, it is about a man in his 70s, Charles, who grew up thinking that his father abandoned him. And his son convinces him to go to the Mississippi Delta to visit this grave. How hard would it be to find a Chinese gravestone here? Um, what they discover and what they uncover are these histories about their grandfather by talking to Asian American, black and white neighbors. And it is this really genuinely moving film. This panel will, or this film will be coupled with a panel discussion on interpersonal relationships, cooperation, conflict and building connections, as well as how does national policy affect us at the really local level amongst your neighbors. Um, CHS has offered free family passes for families that want to learn more about local Asian American history to go visit the CEM. And, um, you know, it's, I think this is a space for us, for parents that may be kind of scared of what Asian American history is to learn about it and potentially become supporters. Thank you, Mike, really important work here. Uh, and then Karen, can I ask you to talk about your project in the spring? Sure, the Yukon Humanities Institute has sponsored a study to look at how an Asian American studies course, which will be implemented in six after school sessions, affects students' mental health, social emotional learning, and sense of identity. And the idea of the study is to provide data that shows that when students learn about Asian American studies, they feel more empowered and that there's a sense of improvement in their mental health. Super. Uh, Karen has, you know, developed the, the, the lessons for this workshop series, this after school program, uh, through her research, her own uh, individual research over the last summer, and has, you know, uncovered some tremendous stories. Thank you, Karen. It's really important work. Um, and, you know, here I want to just, you know, identify where we want to be in the next year. Um, I'll just read these out loud that, that you know, we want to have our first you know, pilot of the ECE course in classrooms. We want to be certifying our second cohort of ECE teachers. Um, we need to really you know, uh, find an online uh, resource center for the work that we're developing 
So it makes it much easier to find, locate, and use. Um, and then we want to develop and, and, and um, we want to conduct our Asian American community survey and uh, share the results through a report. Um, and this will help to demonstrate the need for a diverse and representative Asian American Pacific Islander studies uh, curriculum and also direct it at the problems which communities say they need help solving. Um, then we want to provide an opportunity for K through 12 API, uh, you know, students, uh, teachers, parents, administrators to uh, come together and celebrate the work that's been done uh, with a summit. Uh, last, and second to last, we want to interface with the K through eight model curriculum development that's going on in the state and, uh, and to support that process. Uh, with the State Department of Education and the uh, Connecticut Council for Social Studies. Um, and then, you know, we also see so much growth and interest in uh, children's literature. So we would like to um, really reinforce and support the Asian American Pacific Islander uh, children's literature author series, um, really inspired by our experience with um, um, with Debbie Machiko Florence's visit to East Haddam. And with that, you know, I want to conclude our presentation, but, you know, do so by thanking, you know, the, the, um, uh, the advisory board uh, for participating, for thinking through this with us, your patience. Um, with our remaining time, 